Okay, I didn't know people could be so short-winded. Yeah, they both were short on their time, so we have a lot of time ahead of us. Uh, so we still have uh, 10 minutes for rebuttal of each one. So, Dr. Jackson. Okay. Well, let's see. Well, we do agree on a number of things, the similarities between lots of species and their DNA, uh, and some, also on some of the similarities between mistakes. Uh, one thing I will point out, uh, a point that, uh, that was made, is that the descent with modification is what evolution is. If that's all, just that I look a little different from my great-grandfather, then I believe in evolution. But you see, uh, uh, the difference was also drawn between microevolution and macroevolution. Uh, in the creation paradigm, there is a limit to how much change can happen just by reshuffling the genes that are already there. By evolution, new genes must be created, coding for new traits with new information, and thereby creating, as Darwin said in the title of his book, the origin of new species. Well, there are limits to the changes, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. Uh, point. Uh, we share these mistakes, these endogenous retroviral sequences in our DNA, 8.5% of our, our DNA being made of these things, and that this is some kind of a marker that shows that, yes, we're related to chimps. It does make an assumption. And I'm not saying assumptions are bad. In science, you must make assumptions when you don't know something. The assumption is made that the only way to really get these things into the genome and into the germ cell lines is by common descent. And that two separate species that never were separate shouldn't be showing the same endogenous retrovirus DNA sticking there in their chromosomes. Well, how many of these are actually ortholicous? How many of these uh, Earths actually are the same ones and are on the same location? And uh, what are the chances of being able to happen if there's 98,000 of these that exist in us, and however many in chimps, maybe 200,000 of them exist in us. Uh, let's take a look at something from, the, uh, from an article from last year, from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. It says that, that uh, these things could go back 85 million years, according to DNA uh, clock testing that, that evolutionists use. Lentiviruses could be very ancient indeed, 85 million years. Now, viruses are known to mutate at, a, at an incredibly rapid rate, maybe a thousand times, maybe a million times faster than other uh, creatures' DNA, like yours. Now, if these viruses have been multiplying and, uh, and mutating at these incredibly accelerated rates for what uh, this article claims is 85 million years, well, a million times that is 8,500 trillion years, and that's in people years. That's different from dog years and people years. I'm talking about people years and virus years, okay? They've had the equivalent of 8,500 trillion years, and what are these lentiviruses? What are these um, endogenous retroviruses today? They are still viruses. They haven't written any new code with new traits or new genetic information. They haven't advanced any. They've done exactly what the creationist paradigm said. By shuffling genes and by innovation of genes by accident, they can make horizontal changes, but they can never get past that limit to change that I was talking about. Until now, scientists thought lentiviruses, like HIV, were too young to have participated in this evolution back and forth. Well, just this past week, uh, uh, I think this is probably the one that, uh, that we were just uh, referring to, the uh, two different lemur species in Madagascar that were found to have the same, and it's very clear, the two different species of lemurs in Madagascar suffered independently and, just about the same time, multiple germline infections. It says here that the whole thing was older than previously inferred by the DNA differences between past uh, uh, between what they see from the past in these, uh, in these now existing lemurs and what they see in living uh, viruses. And uh, they happen independently. Two separate lineages, two separate lineages got this uh, endogenous retrovirus. Well, viruses can infect different species. 
It happens all the time. The, uh, our, the report here in uh, a Public Library of Science Genetics just of this week says, the viruses that were endogenized or, or got into the genome in the two lemur species were nearly identical. Yet, of course, these might have been 38 million years ago, uh, but today the, the sequences are nearly identical, showing that they are probably the same thing. Two different species of lemurs got the same cold or whatever it was. You know, isn't it possible that people and lemurs or people and chimpanzees could get the same virus at the same time and then those same endogenous retrovirus sequences can run into the genome and it can, yes, indeed, make it look like if your paradigm is that chimps and uh, humans have the same grandfather, it would look like that would be in support of that. Uh, or it could happen, it could fit right in with the creation paradigm too. They both just simply contracted the same virus, which then put the, uh, implanted the, uh, the retrovirus sequence into the genome. Again, this is transparent to the issue. How many of these things are actually at the same location on the same chromosomes? How many of them are, in other words, orthologous? They, they really are, or homologous? And how similar are they? I think this probably needs more research, I think you will see evidence that goes both ways easily in molecular genetics. I think you will see evidence that goes one way or the other. Personally, I think you'll see more evidence going the creation paradigm way, but evidence is not proof. It's stuff that helps you think that your opinion is stronger, but proof is what's needed in science, data, logic, reason, and thinking. That's what we need. It's okay to have theories. It's okay to make assumptions. Those things are not wrong, but we should not teach them as though they're facts. And here's just a list of, of other viruses that uh, animals and humans both uh, can contract. And you can certainly have these viral DNA pieces of sprigs in both humans and animals of, of any of these in modern times. Thank you. When a retrovirus, okay, retroviruses mutate really fast. Um, that's because when they are converted from RNA to DNA, the protein that does that doesn't have any proofreading mechanisms like our cells have. So, so they end up making a lot of mistakes. Um, and that's actually one of the points where mathematical models have really, really helped because you get so many variations with HIV that it's almost impossible to test them all in the lab. So, Math is also our friend. It's not a cop-out. Um, but once it becomes an endogenous retrovirus, um, it has the exact same proofreading mechanisms as our own cells have, which is actually pretty good. Um, and also about uh, getting new genes and new information. Um, I'm going to talk about that just a little bit, but uh, if you're really interested in how viruses can create new genes, Google uh, Abby Smith and HIV. Um, because Michael Behe, an intelligent design creationist, made the claim that HIV is the super mutator and it can't get any new information, when in fact it kind of has. So Google that if you're interested. Um, but I want to talk about how our genomes get new DNA, because it's actually a really cool story. And I want to dismiss um, the kind of pop media culture claim about junk DNA while I have everybody's attention here. Uh, so when you hear a science reporter <coughs> say something about junk DNA. It's always along the lines, of scientists thought this was useless and now it's got a function. That's not what junk DNA is. Junk DNA actually has a very specific definition that came up in the 1970s and it's a very cool story that I'm gonna tell y'all. So what happened was, um, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, well, long, long ago, before we had all this really cool technology, scientists were uh, just figuring out that DNA is how inheritance is transmitted from parent offspring. We didn't know that back then. And so they thought that these big, elegant, complex creatures like ourselves must have a ton of DNA, whereas we have more than, say, a dog, which would have more than a chicken, which would have more than a fish or a turnip. 